Hello, in this video I want to talk about functions because we use functions to uh, avoid having huge test spec files. Sometimes we extract some code that we develop uh, to some external functions. And of course we can reuse in some other tests. So it will help us to improve the reusability and remove duplication as well. So let's see what kind of functions we can use and in what uh, different forms we can leverage them into our test code. So let me write a very super basic test here. It will just print something in the console. So let's do a greeting here with my name. Let's execute this playwright test with the relevant spec file which is playground playwright that typescript when i execute this i see the console log over there so let's extract this into a function so i can define a function which is doing the same thing here which will be a function and this is a greeting function I will just move here and I will just call the relevant function. Let's execute the same. Yes, it is working in the same way. And I can even parameterize this name because I don't want to execute only for a magical number embedded value inside the test. But I can change this value so I can perform even a data driven test in this way, right? So let me, for example, parameterize this. This function will take a name as a parameter, which will be a string type, and it will use it inside the function. So this time I have to pass my value to the function and it will take it and consider and use inside the function. So what I want to uh, pass, which will be written in console, the previous value that I passed was Mesut, right? My name. So this will be my argument. Argument is the value that I pass to the parameter of the function. So let's try it again. Still working, very cool. So this is already my function, but there is another way of defining the function, which defining this function as a variable. Right. Can be a constant, let, or any other scope related type. So. Let's define in this way. Now, this is my variable, and how I will define it will be a function taking a name parameter and just doing the console log. So, what if I execute this? It will again do the same thing. Yeah, so these are the functions. Very cool. Sometimes we can use functions because we discussed about parameters and the arguments. Sometimes we can pass even another function as an argument. So let's try to do something like, for example, I will call greeting2, but I want this function to execute another function, like for example, let's have another function which will do, for example, which will take a name again. And it will return this name.
but maybe by appending a greeting in the beginning. So let's try this way. And here, what I will do is when I call, like, of course, I need a fourth function. Let me just copy this. So here I will call greeting four and I will pass greeting two, uh, three as well. So greeting four will take the name and will take a function. Function to execute, right? So I will write to console a value which will be returned from this function. So to this function, I'm passing the name, and whatever will return here, I will print in the console. So let's see what will happen here. So when I pass greeting 3 to greeting 4, it will take greeting tree and execute with the name. So greeting tree will take this name and return by appending a high. Looks accurate. Let's see if it works. So we can uh, even define the type of the function here. So let's see what is happening now. I will execute the test and high message. Yes, we can add a Blank space here. Yes. So what happened here? I passed a function to another function, and it, this function took my argument name and understood which function it should call. And this function call is called and returned a value to here and the function I'm calling directly from my test case uh, printed the console, we, uh, the printed the value to the console, which was returned from the uh, function called by this function, which was directly uh, triggered from the test case. So these kind of functions that are called from other functions are named as callbacks. And here I'm calling the callback. So Maybe I can directly define my function here, right? I don't have to write it or define it externally because I will already call this function and I'll pass another function. So when I'm uh, calling this uh, main function, I can directly define my other function here, uh, which is called as defining inline functions, which are not defined externally, but uh, directly uh, defined whenever we are calling our main function. So let's see how we can do that. I will do the same way. I will pass my argument here and I will call my function, but my function is not defined yet like this one. So I will just define it here. So let's just try to do that just as we do here, right? So how do we define functions? Something like this. We define our name. Uh, what can we say? Like greeting five, I guess it is now five. Okay, it takes name and it returns Hello, and let's specify something else just to understand it's coming from here. Hello from the inline function. All right, let's see what happens now.
Yeah, hello from the inline function method. So now what did we do? We again called the function and we passed our arguments and our second argument is another function, which is a callback. But in this case, the callback is an inline function, which is directly defined inside the uh, code that we are writing. So we can even skip assigning a name to this function because inline functions don't have to be uh, named, so they can be anonymous as well. So this time it's an inline function, but without a name, which means it is an anonymous function. How can I write this? this yes. Still no problem. Yes, still no problem. So we saw several ways to define or call functions. And by by the way, these are functions, right? But sometimes I interchangeably use a functions and methods. But normally methods are the functions which are a member of some other objects. So in this case, since they don't belong to some other classes or objects. They are not uh, the member of those other objects or uh, attributes of other objects. Uh, they are not methods. They are just functions here. So we saw uh, several ways to do them, to uh, call them or define them. So let's see one more thing we can do, which is defining these functions as array functions. When I was talking about the MCAS script 5 and 6 versions, I told that it was introduced by ES6. So it is very convenient to define these functions as array functions. So let's see how we can do that. For example, simply this one. How we can convert this into an array function? I guess it is very similar to the next one. So let me do it over second one. So here, the only difference will be something like this. So when we define this, we will just first the input, what kind of input the function will take, and then we will pass an array, and the rest will be the action, which will be uh, performed by this function. So this was now creating function number 5, I guess. So this is an array function. The structure is like taking the input and then with an array doing the action. So we can even pass the return value here. So in this case, it will not do anything. So it will just do a, a void type. So here, if, for example, if I was returning something after uh, doing the console log, if I would return something like a number or something like this then my return type would be a number right because i think it's complaining about this yes so type number is not assignable to type void but if i change my return type now it will not complain about type assignment cool let's call this function now Of course, I have to pass a string and it is still working. Cool. And the beauty of array functions is I can even simplify this. For example, where is it here? Let's again convert this to a void. So I don't need this return value, I don't really use. So what I can do here is, if I have only one line in the action that the function is doing, I can get rid of these. And it is only one line function. It's super simple. So taking this input and after taking this, doing this action here. 
So let's call this as well. To see there is still no problem. Oh, still working. So in this video, what we have seen is the functions and inline and anonymous functions and array functions and the callbacks which can be passed as an argument to some other functions so let me share just a few more examples and then we can close this topic by summarizing all the things that we have uh, discussed in this video like for example if i have an array like something like one, two, three. I can call a function map, which is just transitioning all the members of the list or the array. But I will map these values into some other values by using another function. So I have to pass a function here. So let's do it as an inline function so this is my conversion function which will return all the members by multiplying by two. So let's print in the console to see what is happening after executing this line. Two, four, six, so each member is multiplied by two. Why? Because I take this uh, array and I mapped to another array by using a function, which is taking all the members and multiplying by 2. So what did we do here? We passed another function to this map function. So this, my, my conversion function, is, an, a, is a callback, which is an inline function, right? I did not define it externally. So I can even get rid of this. So at this time it will be just a, an a anonymous function. I don't know the name, but somehow I have an inline function here, which is a callback to this map function. And you know what? Let's try to do it as an array function. So how was it? I was taking the input and I was doing some actions here, right? So what is the input that I take? Like the member of the function, uh, member of the array. And what I will do here? Member of the array after multiplying by two. Cool. So what was the beauty of uh, array functions? I can get rid of this when I have only one return. Right, so okay, and I don't even need this. Cool. So my array function here is taking the member of array. And after taking this, just returning uh, the, the multiplication of the member of array and returning it. So let's see what it will do. Yeah, it's still working in the same way. So I can even specify the type which will be returned, right? It is taking a number and it will returning again a number. So now this is 
an array function. In the meantime, it's a callback. To map function and it is in line I did not define this array function externally and I don't have a name for this array function right so it is anonymous all right I think it would be the uh, summary of uh, usages of all uh, the things that we have discussed in this video